So I'd like to share some uh, of my experience in experimenting with different ways of engaging with students. Um, and there's yet another acknowledgement. So yes, I'm being recorded or whatever. Good. So, okay. So I'd like to talk specifically about one uh, recent class that I taught two times, both with a lot of support from Bart Barry here and also from amazing teaching uh, assistants and research assistants. It's called the Semester in Alternate Reality. So I just give a, like to give a quick overview of the class so you get a context. So that was a, a, a semester in dialogue class initially uh, with uh, three kind of epics, major showcases. And there were actually a lot more uh, demonstrations and showcases we did later on for this because there was a lot of interest. This is how the showcase looked like. So it was a fairly major operation. We had three of these big showcases. And I wish I could show you the virtual reality project. So we tasked them to do something meaningful with these uh, things to give them more agency and authenticity in there. So it, the best I could do is uh, probably, uh, probably just, just show a video. I might need to get away from this while playing or actually I need to mute my mic. Um, Okay, so I'll show a video. That's just a one brief project video, just to give you a bit of an idea where they explored using VR to create a futuristic scenario. And I'll stop talking, switch this off. Let's see if this works. Hello, pioneer of the future. Imagine, if you will, a voyage through the stars where you, an astrocadict, explore Kodilok planets with the promise of new vast lands for humanity to inhabit. The wonders of the cosmos are at your fingertips, ready to be revealed. Will you heed the last call to Elysium and embark on the mission to the promised lands? So as part of... Switch this off. Um, so people were really tasked to create meaningful projects and uh, Somehow my Zoom isn't working anymore. Okay. Too many issues, tech issues here, sorry. Um, so people all, we tasked them to really tap into their own passions. We asked them what their own transformative experiences was, what they cared about, what matters to them, uh, find teams based on that. So really had a support team. So just quick uh, overview of uh, the two iterations we had on this. The first one uh, was a 15 credit course, the uh, second one, a six credit. I won't go into all the details. Um, but uh, basically it was different uh, students from different departments. The second iteration, we also had a few grad students. What was similar between these two was basically it's all face-to-face, -face, was project-based uh, learning, experiential, team-based learning. We embraced an agile structure, regular feedback channels, we had to do meaningful projects. We had lots of individual coaching sessions, both with the individual people and with the teams. Um, and also I'd like to mention that we had very amazing teaching research assistants who are deep into this and we already had an existing connection so we could really walk the talk about uh, trust and they really cared about the topic quite a, a bit which really helped a lot. With the second iteration uh, we also switched to an ungrading one uh, uh, framework basically and we asked people to also, we, we changed the design learning outcomes quite a bit. Um, before going there, maybe I'll give a bit of a background to who I am and why I care about this. So I guess on one, one side of my personality is really the instructor. Um, I like to think of myself more as a coach because I think that's kind of the thing that really aligns a lot more with who I am. Um, and the other part, honestly, is really the, the researcher. So in a way, I think I'm more like a natural born researcher that also had to start teaching and then with a lot of uh, coaching uh, and help, I think I gradually found my way of really doing this in a way that I actually care about and that actually works for me, which took a while because the models I had really didn't work for me at all. Um, in my lab, we also switched more and more into using technology for doing something meaningful, like this model is basically designed, investigating virtual reality for positive impact on individuals and society. And we also research on how to design for connection, uh, creating frameworks for transformative experience design. It, as you can imagine, this, there's no way this does not influence the way I teach and the other way around. So uh, basically my students in the class were not the guinea pigs, they're a part of a big uh, experiment that we all knew about. Um, so 
basically to bring this together. So one of my goals was really to try and see how we could foster and create an environment supporting a sense of social connection, belonging, safety. A lot of these aspects here that we've uh, heard about today already and also how to give students more agency and ownership over their own uh, growing. And I realized like I, I have to step away from my traditional forms of teaching that I'm familiar with to do this. And so one of the big challenges is really, okay, how do I actually become the person who's able to do this and to mentor students in this way? So there's a lot about uh, overcoming my own fears and insecurities and figuring out how to do this. And, uh, but also uh, realizing like, okay, what would authentic instruction really look like for me? And um, uh, there's three aspects I like to talk uh, a bit more about. One is um, power kind of at the very core of teaching by definition, by the hierarchy we have, we are imbued with this power. This is part of my privilege. I guess I also tick off all the other boxes. I'm old, white, male, uh, and so on. I have a tenured position, so, um, uh, so how do we do this? But before I do, I'd just like to uh, rethink the idea of partnering. So to me, partnering is something that's equal between people or requires some equality. And honestly, I think for our students, they'll never be partners because we are always the ones who are grading them. And even if you do an ungrading, ultimately, you're still the checkpoint. You still have the ultimate responsibility as well. So um, what I think more is really switching from this idea of partnering to really more generally, authentically connecting, empowering students. So really I think of myself or a hope that I'm more of a coach and mentor uh, than a partner um, to the students. So um, I'd like to focus a bit on these uh, three aspects and go a bit more into this. And, um, oh, okay, there's just a delay. Um, so in the semester in alternate realities or in any class, basically the, the powers really has always been this kind of dance between me exerting authority, guiding them and sometimes stopping them from doing things and redirecting and taking agency away so I could uh, hopefully guide them and coach them in a direction. So in a way I was unpartnering or had to do this and that's where often the hardest time where it's like, oh, they're doing something cool. They think it's cool, but I know this is not going to work because they have a different background. Uh, and then of relinquishing control, trusting the students to do this. And this to me is really a dance uh, for lack of a better metaphor. And then sensing when to do what, I think for me it was one of the real big challenges. So just to give you a few examples, so uh, basically in this class uh, we had five uh, fairly broad course level learning outcomes, but also two individual ones where students had to choose basically and reflect uh, what they really want to do, what they care about. So we called a technical joker and a non-technical joker. And then through the ungrading part, really designed their own learning plan, reflections, journaling, and so on, midterm reflections, and a lot of coaching from me and the TAs. And then at the end, they had to demonstrate what they learned and uh, how they learned it and all of these kind of things. And yes, they could use ChatGPT and all of that. We actually taught this, but this is not the part of the, my talk. But the idea is really, okay, what did they uh, learn and uh, how did they grow? Uh, so really me uh, relinquishing power to give them agency to do this, but also requiring authenticity. I wanted them to really reflect what they need to do, what they could get out of this class. And there's of course, lots of other, uh, ways we try to do this, like they, we shared our own experiences, transformative experiences, and all these other things. Um, so I'd like to maybe give a few uh, examples to make this a bit more concrete. Um, so one of the challenges was, okay, we had this, so people formed their own teams, and uh, basically I facilitated that, but didn't want to impose any teams. So they talked about what they cared about, and there was these two guys who just loved cars, and they wanted to do a drunk driving simulation, and two, two uh, women uh, joined them, and uh, I, I just didn't think the project was uh, going to work. I really had deep concerns, checked with my TA, and it was like, I have to kill that project. <laughs> so, so I try to explain how and why and at the same time coach them. And within uh, half an hour, basically, uh, we, uh, they were able to come up with a new project. And what that basically did was I kind of had to take away agency and power from the two people who were invested in this initially and empower the other two, the two women who were a bit more quiet initially. But those four together then were actually able to do something quite amazing. Um, on the same day, uh, we had to ask them to create their own team building activities. So instead of me talking, I'd like to challenge basically one of their uh, observations. 
the day we went picnicking for team bonding is the day our initial direction was shut down, which is also the day we came up with the idea of ecospectra. The originally stressful day surprisingly turned out to be the most memorable day of the term. The moment we pulled out a blanket from nowhere, sat down on Burning Mountain, having a picnic that none of us planned, uh, while writing the vir virtual reality design document on a laptop that's connected to somebody's hotspot and being bitten by mosquitoes as the sun went down was a moment we realized I won't regret uh, working with these people in my team. And that's how they documented this. <laughs> <laughs> so in a way, it's like, okay, yes, I was re obviously really happy to, to read this final reflection like uh, uh, six weeks later. It was like, okay. Uh, and, and it was very obvious that they uh, got engaged, but it was really this delicate dance of power. Um, Maybe another example. Um, this was um, basically also me having to intervene, so take away power, so <laughs> unpartnering, sorry, but really coaching in a uh, hopefully a good way. Um, they had a hard time coming up with an ending scene. It was like, well, we talk about imaginative immersion. Yes, we think virtual reality, but really I want you to try this out. So I invited all uh, four team members to really do a live narration, close the eyes, listen to the other, and one student nailed it uh, to a degree where I literally got goosebumps when she uh, narrated her own experience, even now thinking about it. Um, and that, again, shifted the dynamics in the team, so empowered more team members. And afterwards, I was like, okay, who should do the narration? Everyone was like, she needs to do that. It's amazing. So basically, the team empowered themselves, but it had to be me intervening with their naturally occurring dynamics to really source that and enable them to do this. Um, so this really helped uh, uh, to do this, I think. Uh, this is how their project looked like uh, uh, in the end. Um, maybe one other example. I think this is where I need uh, the video again, so there will be some tech challenges here. Um, often, the part of the dance is also you never know what's going on. So here's an example that we happen to take on video. Um, where we were experimenting with this what if rip, riffing, embodied uh, prototyping where they come up with ideas. And I felt like one student was just like sitting there and not fully engaging. Now see what happens here. What if you're the coral reef and you're seeing like at first all your inhabitants and then you're like, oh wow, look at this cute little happy family. And then slowly they all start dying and leave you alone. Yeah. And then oh. by the end of it, it's empty and you're stuck. Wow. So what if you're a coral reef, but then like... You just end up while doing it. We need more energy. <laughs> but then you go inside. <laughs> it's, like, it's like another Earth within the coral reef. And then you zoom in and you see your own city. And it's like the oh. whole world within. <laughs> <laughs> you save the coral reef, you save the planet. Okay? <laughs> okay. Okay. So you see also how beautifully the, the rest of the team responded. So this was one of the moments where we just kind of trusted our intuition. We were like, I think we need to do something. There's something in there. Um, you might ask, okay, what was the impact on the students? So this is from the first offering where we had already more time to analyze all the data. Uh, and one of the many themes that came up was really uh, this kind of sense of community. And maybe I'll just let you read this yourself. Um, So we were quite amazed that some of these ideas actually worked out in terms of supporting people. People, when they reflected on it, they showed also many of these interactions we did. One key thing I think was really also giving agency over choosing project, uh, finding somebody to really do something together that they really care about. So one of the questions we asked them is like, okay, what do you really care deeply about that's really worth spending so much time, effort, intelligence, and technology on? Um, so in a nutshell, I think what we try to do is really prioritize an agile student-centered approach, blending these ideas of agile project-based experiential learning with individual coaching sessions and grading, and really trying to create ideally an environment uh, where people could authentically connect, feel empowered, and really prepare to tackle real-world challenges. And this is, I mean, in reality, that's more like a, a hope uh, than, uh, but as you can see, a lot of that actually did work. Okay. I'll try to wrap this up. Maybe I'll go a bit fast. Um, so what did we learn from this? Um, really agile and being able to pivot uh, quickly is, is critical. 
really balancing this dance of agency, like when do I give people power, when do I need to take it back, and somehow developing and trusting my own intuition in real time, because that's when the really most interesting things always happened. Trusting is essential, so this is uh, trusting to, okay, let them do the work, but it's also daring to uh, take risks and try things out if you feel like it might work, and then getting the feedback. Um, a lot of us really, I mean, I heard the term connection before, content before, but it was so obvious. Until the team uh, gelled together, it was impossible to really get them to really work collaborative together. Uh, coaching and reflection, I think, is really key. I think this is something that's totally undervalued and underutilized at, um, as a few and probably most environments. Um, and then caring, and uh, what I mean here is, uh, with what we do is more the, the compassionate uh, understanding aspect. Uh, in virtual reality, people talk a lot about empathy machine and so on, but yeah, there are certain things you, where you don't want to take on the emotion. It's just too dangerous. You don't want to re-traumatize people. Um, and then finally, I think realizing my own role uh, really is, I mean, if I'm honest, I think this is where I live the best, which works the best for me. And it took a lot of time, a lot of coaching from Barb and others and uh, Sarah to really help me realize like, oh, I can actually do this and it probably actually makes sense to do this. Um, so yeah, and so this is my big bit of overview of my dance of agency, authenticity and power. So thanks a lot.